there used to be a demo version of Pokemon Omega Ruby F and Sapphire. Yes, used to be, because since the shutdown of the Nintendo 3DS eShop, there's no longer actually a way to access the download of this demo anymore. And if you did play the demo a long time ago, you would actually, well, get a few different things. For example, if you play the game in the demo in Japan, you could get a Mega Steelix or a Mega Glalie if you were in the West, which you could then transfer to your official game afterwards. And if you played multiple times over and over again, you can actually receive a nugget in the game as well. And if you are in Mobile City, well, there's actually a really interesting thing. In the Poker Melage Center Shop, there's actually a TV that displays three pictures. The first one features the Prism Tower, the second one, the Tower of Mastery, and the third one, the Lumius Museum, which is very odd, but kind of cool little references. Another really cool little reference, or I mean, I guess you could call it a reference, an Easter egg, is that in Oras, you can find a girl in the Pokemart inside a specifically Verdant Turf town, where she'll be singing a short song, which goes ball, ball, nest ball, 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 luxury ball. Afterwards, she says that she learned the song from a strange person in red clothes when she visited the Kalos region once. This is definitely a reference to a Team Flare Grunt who sings, kind of sings a similar song before being battled in the Pokeball Factory in X and Y, so a cool little reference. Then there is the Secret Isle. Now, this is a location in Hoenn, in Oras, specifically, where you can actually go and make a secret base. But that's about it, though. To get to the island itself, you can either, well, soar there or fly there. Uh, but for the most part, it's just a place that doesn't have anything. There's no trainers or wild Pokemon. And only thing you can really do is make a secret spot here or a secret base. And since we're speaking about secret locations, there is actually two more that you can find. There's the secret shore and the secret meadow. Both of these are, well, mostly empty. There is no wild Pokemon and again, no trainers. One of them, the secret meadow, for example, is a small meadow of grass and flowers surrounded by cliffs. Though there is one thing you can do here, which is to find one of six different secret spots for, well, your secret base. Then there is also the secret shore, which works in the exact same way. There's six secret spots that are spread throughout the area and you can just make bases and that's about it. No Pokemon. Again, really weird. Speaking of the demo, an actually interesting fact is that none of the Pokemon in the wild during the demo can be shiny, with the exception being the starter Pokemon Groval, Combusket, and Moshtomp during the first adventure specifically. However, since the demo does not include any shiny textures, with the exception of, I guess, Steven Stone's Metagross in this case, these Pokemon will actually just be in their normal, like, regular form and regular coloration, except for one thing, they'll have a red star in their summary screen and a sparkle effect when they enter into a battle. However, after the first adventure in the game is finished, they're no longer treated as shiny in any sort of way. So yeah, kind of the, this weird random shiny Pokemon that most people will never get to have because, well, the demo isn't available. There's a couple in Mawile that will actually give you destiny knots and their names come specifically from the parents in Malcolm in the Middle. Hal and Lois. So you guys may know the Floatstone, an item in Pokemon that when held will make the Pokemon holding it much lighter. However, if you go and get it from the Ace Trainer that usually would give it to you, if you give it to him and return later, he will have turned into a hiker after losing the stone and giving it to you, which would suggest that he gained his weight back after losing the stone, which is kind of strange. So you guys may know the Ghost Girl. Well, she actually makes a reappearance in Mount Pyre. She normally shows up in X and Y. If you talk to Steven Stone while you have a shiny Beldum in your party, which by the way, the shiny Beldum was available for about two months in the beginning of Oras's actual release. For anybody that got the game early, you could get a free download of it. However, if you show that shiny Beldum to specifically Steven Stone, he will actually mention and make a reference to, well, a shiny Cherizard, one that belonged to a guy he'd met, which was Mega Evolved, specifically talking about Alan from the Pokemon anime. If you head to Doofer Town, there is actually a house here with a map of the whole all of the Poke Earth. And what's funny is this is an actually official reference by, well, I guess the Pokemon company to Cerebi, which is an unofficial fan website that covers all things Pokemon. Actually, a lot of facts in this video may be from there. And if you go to a Lily Cove house, there is actually inside of it a Hawaiian artwork or what seems to be a Hawaiian artwork with a giant palm tree that looks oddly similar to Alolan Exeggutor, which might have been a hint directly to Pokemon Sun and Moon, which were, well, the next game slated to be released right after Omega Ruby 
in Alpha Sapphire. We mentioned one ghost girl earlier, but there's another ghost girl that makes an appearance in this game, which is specifically this ghost girl behind Phoebe during the Elite Four battle. You'll see her just sitting there, and there's a few different theories as to what she is. You guys should let me know in the comments, who do you think this ghost girl specifically is? Now, one of the coolest things in Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire is that if you go ahead and actually transfer Pokemon from the past, which by the way, Ores was, I think, the first game where you could actually transfer all your Pokemon from the past games all the way up to Oras and actually have them all in, well, I guess your squad, if you want to put it like that. But the interesting thing is you could transfer it all the way from Ruby and Sapphire as well as Emerald all the way up to Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Now, if you did this, the actually really cool thing is you'd be given something. You'd be given a sort of reward. And what can you do with this reward? Well, not really many things, but one of the cool things is that it, it's kind of a diploma confirming that the Pokemon is from the past and you can put it in your secret base, which is pretty neat. So we already talked a bit about Steven Stone, but did you guys also know that if you go into Steven's, well, house and go to one of the rooms, you can actually find that he has a bunch of rocks from different locations all around the Pokemon world. He's got rocks from Johto and even Unova in there and other ones. So it's kind of a cool little reference to the previous games and the fact that Steven Stone, as a character, is a well-traveled man. One does not simply walk into Mirage Island. That's what one of the old men says here when you talk to him, which is a double reference. One of those things is specifically, well, the Lord of the Rings meme, where they specifically talk about one does not simply walk into Mordor. However, there's another reference, which is the Mirage Island itself, a location which was insanely hard to reach within the original Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, where you could get yourself a specific berry, but also where you could get just a bunch of y notes if you needed them. It was really difficult to reach it in the past. However, what they did specifically in, well, this game is that they decided to make the Mirage Island concept basically a widespread thing. So that's actually the way you reach certain islands and also you get certain legendaries by just traveling around on top of Latias or Latias. Like in other Pokemon games, in specifically Auras, you can also get your hands on different trainer cards. Now, which ones are these? Well, you've got the Stage 1, Stage 2, and Stage 3 ones, which are Bronze, Silver, and Gold, respectively. Now, now, how do you actually get them? Well, there's different ways for each one. For example, you can defeat the Elite Four for one, complete the Hoenn Pokedex, and battle through one of the Battle Mansion facilities and defeat the leader at the 50th streak. And if you've done this, then you get, I think, the golden one, which is similar a little bit to how it was in Emerald when you went in, inside of the actual Battle Frontier and did this. The Galileo Shiny Rayquaza event. Now, this happened actually a long time ago, and this was to celebrate the release of the Ancient Origins TCG set, where basically a Shiny Rayquaza was put on the Nintendo network. Now, nowadays, this is no longer possible to get, but this was a Shiny Rayquaza, which was about level 70, had a Dragon Fang on it, and the ability Airlock, with the moveset Dragon Dragon Ascent, Dragon Claw, Extreme Speed, and Dragon Dance, which was pretty freaking nice. Speaking of exclusive Pokemon, did you guys know that there was a Super Smash Bros. Greninja? So if you buy both the Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo 3DS and Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, and then register them on your club Nintendo, you would then receive a special level 36 Greninja based on the Greninja that was actually used in Super Smash Bros., which was for the 3DS and Wii U. There's actually a reference to Junichi Masudo, uh, one of the directors at Game Freak, or used to be. He actually left a reference to his own daughter, specifically in Sotopolis City. There'll be a little girl character you can talk to that will give you berries, uh, just randomly. And yeah, just a little thing he put in there. There is a secret Pokemon in the sunken ship. Now, if you go there, you'll actually notice that once you enter one of the rooms, it will say it feels as though you're being watched. Well, it turns out that once you've dealt with this and check the bookcase in the corner, you're still going to be watched and once you open up your items and this is the last step needed to actually trigger the Pokemon which is going to be Spiritomb to actually appear. Now this is well Spiritomb which is a Pokemon that 108 spirits can join together to create so a lot of people who have died on the ship probably make up this Spiritomb in particular but that's not the only thing there's 8 108 of them needed and this location is Route 108 which is kind of morbid. When you have to deal with Deoxys in Pokemon Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, after kind of dealing with everything else, it will appear as a triangle-shaped comet. Well, this is in fact actually a reference to, well, Pokemon Leaf Green and Fire Red, where if you try to get your hands on Deoxys, which was all on its own already a problem, which was, well, to get to Birth Island, which is a location that, well, you needed an item to get there, which you couldn't really get easily. Now, what's really funny is that there is a triangle on the island that will move around and you have to do a specific puzzle to get it to, well, well, reveal itself. And it turns out it's Deoxys, which is funny because, yeah, this is just a direct hint towards that, a direct reference. 
So this one might be a one that was a long time in the making. So back in Red and Blue, there was actually a kind of a global police agent guy that you could find on the SSN. And we also see him in Fire Red Leaf Green later on. But it turns out that this guy could possibly be Looker. The reason I say this is because the first time we ever see Looker is in Generation 4, of course. That's when we get introduced to him. However, in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, you find actually Looker in specifically the Battle Resort. He suffers from amnesia due to an unknown reason. He washed up on the shore and is soaking wet when you actually find him and a woman which brought him to her cottage is trying to you know dry him up i guess and either way what's this all about well basically it could be that the police agent you see back in red and blue fire red leaf green who was on the ssn may have been one of the people who was on it when well it capsized and when the ship went you know ahoy and just wasn't around anymore and he may have actually drifted onto hoenn because of that there was also actually a beta version of omega ruby alpha sapphire and inside of this one there is some interesting little tidbits for example Eternal Floet. AZ's Eternal Floet is actually present in these games, but, well, it doesn't make an actual appearance in the game when you play it, but was in the beta. There's also three unused moves which exist in the data of these games. Uh, no legally obtainable Pokemon can actually learn them, and no Pokemon were able even distributed knowing these sort of moves. One of these is Thousand Arrows, Thousand Waves, and Light of Ruin, which is interesting because Light of Ruin is a fairy type move, so curious what this one would be for. So now we're going to jump back onto the topic of the demo of these games. So we've already talked about how the demo had different missions, but the thing is, there's actually secret missions you can do in the demo. Now, these secret missions only really unlock once you've done the other missions multiple times, and you have a small chance of this happening. It's just a random chance of it going down. So, for example, uh, one of these missions is that as you play through the demo multiple times, there's going to be a small chance you'll be able to activate the secret mission. Now, this mission has you basically going to an island where there are no wild Pokemon, and on this island, you will then encounter a Team Aqua or Team Magma Grunt, and you have to team up with Mei and then face off against them at random. And as you battle through the Grunts in this demo, a team with Mei and, of course, her Raichu and Swellow, you will then learn that there are, you know, there's supposed to be, like, kind of Mega Evolution Pokemon still around here. And once you've completed this, you will actually anger Matt or uh, Tabitha, depending on, again, which team you're going to be dealing with, and they're going to be reporting this back to their leaders. Now, this mission doesn't actually give you anything. It's nothing too crazy, but there's a second one as well. And this one is another rare secret mission with a low appearance rate of about 15 days of play. So it does take a while for it to happen. And again, nothing too crazy. The complete of completion of this mission actually only really opens up more parts of Moss Deep City, including Steven Stone's house for when you explore the demo. And you do get some items as well, which is, I guess, kind of nice. So yeah, if you just do these things repeatedly over time, you may be able to get some of these missions, which is really cool. However, another aspect I should mention about this has got to specifically be this. So all of the lost NPCs in the missions were actually people that were lost people, but then you can actually find them in the actual final version of Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire on the different Mirage spots. So yes, the people in the demo actually show up for real in the actual games when you ride around on your Latios or Latias as actual characters, and that's where they've been this whole time, which is so freaking weird, man. It's just a crazy little thing. So this is a little bit of a weird reference, but in the Petalburg city, if you actually find a lady here, she will talk to you about Norman, and she will claim that Norman, uh, well, I guess, and all of his family, including, I guess, you as a character, actually came from Johto, that they came to, well, I guess, Hoenn from the Johto region, which is really weird, because then they changed it, I think, in Emerald, and in the World Tournament in Black and White 2, they also say that Norman is from Olivine City, which is random, but yeah, apparently this shows up in both Ruby, Sapphire, Omega Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire, which is really cool. Now, we previously mentioned AZ and, well, his Floet being in the beta version of of the games. However, there's actually a flower on this tree that's growing that looks like AZ's floet like flower specifically. And it turns out this is the case because a tall man was the one who gave the seed for this big tree to grow. The man was AZ. So it seems like a direct reference back to X and Y. If you're playing Alpha Sapphire and you go inside of Shelly's room, one of the admins of Team Aqua, well, you're going to find something interesting. There's a picture and there is some scrubbed out text on it that seems to be referring to Archie as well as Jirachi and, well, her herself being in the picture. Jirachi, as you guys may know, is the Pokemon that grants really any wish. So is it possible that, well, Archie and Herb were actually asking Jirachi for a wish whenever they found it as kids? Kind of strange, but an interesting one.